One of the great things about studying mathematics is that there's so many inexpensive books that you can get that you can use for self-study. I collect math books, so I have hundreds of math books. It's completely ridiculous. But this book here is a book that's really inexpensive that I bought a very, very long time ago. This is probably one of the first math books I ever bought like for self-study. I bought this book when I was taking calculus and I've done some problems from it and I've read portions of it. It's called Essential Calculus with Applications and it's by Richard Silverman. It's a Dover book. So Dover is a company that takes old math books and reprints them and sells them at really affordable prices. It's a soft cover, but in my experience, Dover soft covers are hardcore. They do not fall apart. You should see my copy of Bomb's Topology. It's completely destroyed. I read the entire book and it's just, it's still, it's still in one piece. Like the binding is still intact. Yeah, awesome. So this is a good one for anyone who wants to, you know, supplement their calculus course. It's certainly not a substitute for like one of the big thick calculus books, like the one by Stewart or Larson or Thomas, but it's super affordable, much cheaper, and it's a pretty cool book. So I thought, hey, let me just briefly show you this book and let's do a problem. Let's do a problem from this book. Let's actually do a problem that involves calculus three. So this book actually has multivariable calculus in it, which is kind of cool, right? You would think, oh, it's a cheap book. It's probably not gonna have a lot of stuff. No, it's got a lot of stuff. And it has stuff that you're not gonna find in a lot of those other big, more modern books. So yeah, it's a really cool book. And let's just go do some mathematics. So maybe you can learn a little bit of mathematics. Let's do it. Here's a super quick look at this book, Essential Calculus with Applications by Richard Silverman, and it's a Dover reprint. Let's quickly look at the content so you see what it contains. We're also gonna do a problem that has a star. So the starred problems are either really, really hard or they're kind of like asides. So they don't really like coincide with the material that's being taught. But I thought it might be fun to do something a little different or a little harder or both. Starts with some mathematical background, which is really cool. I've actually read all of this. Differential calculus. Differentiation as a tool. So some topics here that you might know or be familiar with if you've studied calculus. And if not, that's okay. It's always an opportunity to learn. By the way, I'll leave a link in the description to this book in case you want to check it out. Integral calculus. Integration as a tool. And then functions of several variables. And it does have uh, hints and answers to some of the problems. Let me just show you really quickly. I want to just do the problem, do some mathematics. So you see it does have some hints and answers to some of the problems, not everything. Notice the typesetting. It's really, really old school, right? It's a really, really old school typesetting. All right, let's jump into it and do some mathematics. This is the problem we're going to do, number 18. Notice it has a star. So starred problems, according to the author, are problems that are just a little bit different from what's being taught in the book or they're a little bit extra challenging. And the author does say that you should not shun the starred problems, you should attempt them. Verify that this function u equals the natural log of one divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared, or obviously x squared plus y squared is not zero, satisfies this equation here. This is called the Palas's equation. And then it says here, an equation like this involving one or more partial derivatives of a function is called a partial differential equation, as opposed to the ordinary differential equation considered in chapter five. So we're basically given a solution to a partial differential equation, in particular Laplace's equation, and we're going to verify it is a solution. Kind of cool, right? So this book actually does have some coverage of partial differential equations. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and write it down and we're gonna do it right away. So we have to verify that U satisfies this equation here. This is called Laplace's equation. The first thing we're gonna do is rewrite U in a more convenient way that will allow us to compute these partial derivatives. And I'll show you what those are, so if you've never seen them, Hopefully this will make just a little bit of sense. Let's start by writing the square root as an exponent. This is the natural log of one over, we can write this as parentheses x squared plus y squared to the one half. And then we can bring this upstairs and make the exponent negative. So this is the natural log of x squared plus y squared to the negative one half. So when you do that, the exponent becomes negative. And then we can take this negative one half and put it in the front. That's from something called the power rule for logarithms. So u is equal to negative one half natural log x squared plus y squared. So that's our u. So now we gotta find partial derivatives. So partial derivatives are just like regular derivatives, 
except you treat all the other variables as constants. So we're going to start by finding the partial derivative of u with respect to x. That's read del u del x. You learned this in Calculus 3. So to find the derivative of the natural log, recall that the derivative of, say, ln w with respect to w is 1 over w. Right? That's the derivative of ln w. So here, the negative 1 half hangs out. We're taking the derivative of this right here, and we're going to use a chain rule. So it's 1 over whatever is there times the derivative of the inside function. So the inside function is x squared plus y squared. We're finding the derivative with respect to x. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of y squared is 0 because we're taking the partial with respect to x. So all other variables are constants. In particular, the y's are constants. So you treat it like as a number, right? The derivative of a number is zero. So the derivative of y squared is zero, so you don't write it. All right, these twos cancel. So we have del u del x equals, and then we still have a negative here, right? Um, from, from this negative one half. So it's gonna be negative x over x squared plus y squared. Now we have to do it again. So that means we have to use something called the quotient rule. I'm going to come over here and refresh your memory for, from the quotient rule. This is something you learn in Calculus 1. If you have a function f over g, and you take the derivative, that's what the prime symbol means. f is your top function, g is your bottom function. It's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom 1 squared. Again, it's the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom 1 squared. Let's apply that here to our partial derivative. So the second derivative of u with respect to x, this is the notation, partial derivative notation, is equal to the derivative of the top, so with respect to x. The derivative of negative x is negative 1 times the bottom minus the top, so parentheses negative x, times the derivative of the bottom with respect to x, so you just get you just get 2x there, okay? You just get 2x in that case. All right, so all over the bottom one squared. So the bottom one is x squared plus y squared squared. That's what's on the bottom, right? Because you squared this piece. Let's just check that. The derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom one squared. Boom. Distribute that negative one. So we have negative x squared minus y squared. Plus, this is going to be plus here, right? Because it's minus and minus. So plus 2x squared over parentheses x squared plus y squared squared. 2x squared minus x squared is x squared. So we're just going to get the second order. This is a second order partial derivative with respect to x. That's what it's called. 2x squared minus x squared is just x squared minus y squared over and then x squared plus y squared. Squared. I'm going to put that in a box because that's useful. It's an accomplishment. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing, uh, but we're going to do it with y. So I think I can squeeze it in over here. So recall u was equal to negative one-half natural log of parentheses x squared plus y squared. So again, del u del y. So now we're taking the partial with respect to y, right? So all of the x's are constants. The negative one-half hangs out. Take the derivative of this bad boy, it's 1 over whatever is there, times the derivative of the inside function, right? So the inside function is x squared plus y squared. The derivative of x squared is 0 because it's a constant. When you're finding the partial with respect to y, we treat all the other variables as constants. So that derivative is 0, and then the derivative of y squared is 2y. That's just the power rule, by the way. So you bring down the 2 and subtract 1 from the exponent, right? So boom, these go away. So we have del u del y is equal to negative y over x squared plus y squared. Very nice. Now we apply the quotient rule that we learned in calculus one to take the second order, to find the second order partial derivative of u with respect to y. So we differentiate the derivative and it gives us a second derivative. It's the derivative of the top, which is negative one times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. And again, because we're finding the partial with respect to y, the derivative of x squared is 0. So this is just going to be 2y over and then the bottom piece squared. Boom. We got this. 
distribute the negative one. So this is the second order partial derivative of u with respect to y. So this is negative x squared minus y squared, and then minus and minus is plus. So it'll be plus 2y squared over, and then this piece here squared. So x squared plus y squared squared. And then same, same thing as before, we can combine these 2y squared minus y squared is y squared. So we have that the second order partial of u with respect to y is equal to y squared minus x squared over parentheses x squared plus y squared squared. So this is the second order partial derivative with respect to y. This is the second order partial derivative with respect to x. Laplace's equation, recall, is just the sum of those and it should be equal to zero. So let's check. I think we can fit it all in one page. How cool, right? So I'm going to go ahead and write down Laplace's equation. So the second order partial with respect to x plus the second order partial with respect to y. And that's equal to, we have to show it's equal to zero, right? So I'm not going to put equals zero. I'm just going to, we're going to show it. So I'm going to go ahead and write this down. So y squared minus x squared over parentheses x squared plus y squared squared plus, and then this here. So it'll be x squared minus y squared over parentheses x squared plus y squared squared. And then we have a common denominator, right? So if you can't see it yet, it's okay. Just write everything over the common denominator. Let's be really pro about it. So you have y squared minus x squared plus x squared minus y squared. Oh, and look at this. This is where the magic happens. This is so cool, right? Look, boom, 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 boom. This is equal to zero over parentheses x squared plus y squared squared. Zero over a non-zero number is zero. Wah! We did it. We verified Laplace's equation for the given function in this problem. We did a problem from Essential Calculus with Applications by Richard Silverman. Legendary book, by the way, right? This book is highly praised. I'll leave the link in case you want to check it out. People love this book. I'm pretty sure it has really good reviews on Amazon. I'll leave the link to Amazon so you can check out the reviews if you want, but I bought this long ago. I've had this book for a very long time, well over a decade. Yeah, look what it says here about Dover books. Dover edition designed for years of use. We have made every effort to make this book the best possible book. Our paper is opaque. With minimal show through, it will not discolor or become brittle with age. Pages are bound in signatures in the method traditionally used for the best books and will not drop out. Books open flat for easy reference. The binding will not crack or split. This is a permanent book. I love that. I love that. I love this company, this Dover company, because they have great math books and, and other subjects too, but I have a huge collection of Dover books. I'm a big fan. Um, so yeah, check it out. Check out check out the link in case you're interested and you can search for more Dover books. And, go on a crazy Dover buying spree like I do. I've spent so much money on books. Um, so yeah, that's it. I just thought I would show you this book. I love it. By the way, I do have courses. In case you want to learn more mathematics, check out my website, mathsorcerer.com. My courses are actually on the Udemy website, but if you want to check them out, please use the links on my website for two reasons. One, uh, if you use the links on my website, um, Udemy doesn't take like a huge cut. Otherwise, they take like a huge cut. Uh, two, if you use the links on my website, I'm pretty sure you're going to get the lowest price because I lowered the price on all my courses to the bare minimum that Udemy would let me set it. Udemy controls the prices, but I'm pretty sure because I lowered the prices so low, if you go through my website, it's like, it's like a permanent sale. I'm pretty sure. I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure if you click, you should get a really low price. So check it out. I've got calculus courses, I've got algebra courses, tons of courses, right? And some of them have assignments, some of them don't, but it's all organized and structured, so it's really easy. You just like follow the order and you'll learn some mathematics. Also, if you are uh, one of my Patreon supporters, let me just say thank you for my Patreon supporters. My Patreon supporters don't really get anything. Um, they're just supporters, which is really cool, so thank you for that. I don't really do anything with Patreon, but I do have a few Patreon supporters, so if you're one of those people, thank you. Very few, but... Thank you to the select few. <laughs> and I do have members. Um, uh, I have a couple different levels for members, but it's basically all the same. I basically just sometimes post videos for members. Also, sometimes when I have live streams, uh, because the chat gets so crazy, sometimes I'll make it members only just so I can keep up with the chat and stuff. But yeah, so thank you uh, for doing all that. And check this out if you want courses. And get this book if you want. The nice thing about books is that they last forever, right? And like it says here, right? This is a permanent book. Oh, I love that. Just got to give it away. 
Love this stuff. Gotta love mathematics. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing math.